Right, mister. Do you want your first lesson in winemaking? Shall I teach you how to make wine? Because today I'm making rhubarb wine. Rhubarb and ginger wine. Awesome. We like a bit of ginger, don't we? Fantastic. Right then, let's get on with it. It's probably one of the most simplest wines you can make. Great for a beginner. Great for a first wine. Really simple. All we need is some rhubarb, some ginger, lots of sugar and some yeast. So we don't want to do it? Oh yes, come on, let's go make some wine. So dude, first thing you need is your big fermenting bucket. Just like this. Oh, I could fit about two babies in that. It's a 25 litre bucket. Try not to fit babies in buckets. I won't ferment babies in buckets. <laughs> So this one is a 25 litre bucket, perfect for bigger brews. Today we're going to make five gallons of rhubarb and ginger wine. Fantastic. You ready? And now I'm going to be adding, well, we're going to be adding our rhubarb. It's the last crop of the season, which I harvested did before you were born. And we have about 11 kilos of rhubarb. I've chopped the rhubarb and I've frozen it because frozen rhubarb is much better for wine making than fresh. It releases more juice and more flavour. Isn't that right, eh? Yeah. So, let's rhubarb ourselves. I've frozen it in two kilo batches so I know how much I'm adding. Isn't that right? We need to learn to count. You see, this one is so easy I can make it whilst holding you. Then shove all the rhubarb into the bucket. Awesome. Oh, what are we doing? That is a lot of rhubarb. Do you see all this rhubarb, dude? And this is after we've made a load of rhubarb chutney. It is. And some more rhubarb wine. Sugar. We need to add sugar. Right, little man. This is my home brew cupboard. It contains all the things we need to make wine from. It's a bit chaotic, but there's a lot of sugar up there. So for this wine, boy, we are going to be adding eight kilos of sugar. One, two, three, and four. Last one. Four two kilo bags makes eight. It does, yeah. So, we're gonna pour this in on top of the rhubarb. And add all four packets. Awesome! We need a tea bag. So I'm shoving one more tea bag into the pot because tea adds a lot of tannins and mouthiness to your wine. And now, mister, we need to add one orange. Why? For the citric acid and the orangey, juicy flavour. Put in one orange after cut in half and squeezed out all the juice. Right. Whilst Ron's having his supper, his dinner, I'm adding one orange. Well, the juice of one orange. Give it a good squeeze. And then just throw in skin as well. Awesome stuff. And now, I can put the kettle on. If you're only a baby, get an adult to boil the water for you. Kettle's on, have a cup of tea. The next stage is really simple. All I'm going to be doing is filling the bucket up full of water, boiling water. The boiling water will dissolve the sugar and release all the flavour from the frozen rhubarb, which is awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Kettle's on, 
I'm going to do a nappy change whilst it boils. Not for me, no. For the baby. See you soon. Boiling water, straight over it. And start to stir. I'm going to mix up all that sugar, get it all dissolved. Get all that rhubarb mixed in, get all that flavour to be released. <laughs> Choosing a wine yeast is a bit of a science, a bit of alchemy it is. So which of these do you think we should use in our rhubarb and ginger wine? We have the red wine yeast, because it's red. We have ginger wine yeast, which would complement the ginger. We like ginger. Rhubarb wine yeast to complement the rhubarb in the rhubarb and ginger wine. What do you say? Rhubarb wine? I think we'll add the rhubarb wine yeast. So we'll put that aside for after we've topped up all the water. Do you want to go back to the mummy and I'll do the water? Because it's boiling, it's hot. <coughs> mummy, the baby is yours. Thank you, hello baby. I'll teach him the rest of this lesson after he's had a feed. Awesome yeah. stuff again. Season. I think they're off to buy my Christmas presents as well. Whilst well, so you've been having a munch, I filled up the buckets with four gallons worth of water. Oh. I have taken a reading with a hydrometer, which is just by here, see? So, what that means is it's going to be very, very strong. But I've made it strong at this point because I'm going to decant all the liquid from the rhubarb mix and add another garden next week. Once I've strained the, the rhubarb off and it's had time to ferment on the pulp. But what we need to do now is add some ginger to it. Should we add some ginger? We like ginger. He looks very ginger. He does look ginger. <laughs> I think he's going to take after his dad and be your ginger. I think he might. Right. So what we're doing now is adding 100 grams of ground ginger to the mix. Right, so we're going to pour it in. Oh, hey. And now we need to add the yeast. Remember earlier we selected the rhubarb wine yeast. So I've made that all ready. It's just going to be poured in to the buckets and given one final stir. Oh yes. So here we go. And put the yeast in. And give it a stir. Any secret tips that you can impart to Ron about this wine? Well, I think this wine will take about a year to mature. About a year? That's a long time, Ronnie. That is. So next Christmas time, it might be perfect. And I think rhubarb and ginger would be a great winter tipple. Do you think? Yeah, good stir. Mix it all around. It would probably go well with mince pies. Very well with mince pies. Oh yes. So, what we need to do now is put a lid on this and stir it every day for a week. Oh, I know it's hard work. But keep on stirring every day for a week and then I'll be back with you in a week and we can strain off the rhubarb and put this into demijohns. I hope I have enough demijohns. They're filling up everywhere, aren't they? I think that's tomorrow's job, is to rack some wine and see if any needs bottling. Demijohns are daddy's favourite toys, you know? Yeah. You're so cutie. You're so cutie. So shall we leave this here for now, and we'll see you in a few days' time. Well now, a full week has passed. My rhubarb has been simmering away in the buckets, fermenting nicely. It's been kept warm, and the heat given off by the rhubarb itself has been amazing. It's bubbly and... anyway, it was awesome. I've strained off the rhubarb into a separate tub. I'm going to add more yeast, more sugar, and get a second ferment out of it. Why waste it? It's good, it's tasty, it's perfectly usable. In here now, I have the five gallons of liquid, 
which I'm going to put into Demijohns. Put the airlock in and everything will be sorted. I'll leave it for another three weeks, six weeks maybe, let it ferment right the way out and then mature it for about a year, until next spring at least anyway. So that's the plan. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then come and subscribe for more wonderful wines. See you soon.